Do you remember all the times that you've bought a flat pack and all the instructions were super clear and everything assembled perfectly the first time around? Yeah, me neither. In this video we're going to be building a base out of wood and assembling a shed to store the go-karts out of the weather. All in this grassy area there is a lot of junk such as wooden logs, bits of old wood and even some concrete rebar that we had left over. So Dad and I start this build by getting out the tractor and putting a scoop on the back just to get everything out. Dad's on the tractor just nudging it all up with the rebar and oh there's a tractor skid. After a while of moving back and forth and working from different angles we were able to move it out. But before we did all that, we had to go over to this pile of dead trees that we're using for a bonfire. And oh, there's another tractor skip. After going back and forth, we eventually cleared enough room for us to drag the rebar out. Since the space was now clear, we can scrape the ground flattish with the tractor, lay down some treated pine posts, put some pallets on top, give the cat a bit of a tickle, then realise that we're going about this all the wrong way. Okay, so we've got most of the things that cleared out of the ground here, like that rebar and any other crap or wooden logs that are over there. So, plan A is to get those treaded pine poles, place them all on the ground here, put pallets on top of that, put the chip on top of that, and the shed on top of that. However, I didn't want to be climbing a mountain this tall just to put the go-karts in. So, plan A was shit. Plan B, just going to be the pallets on the ground, chip it on top, shed on top, and hopefully less shit. So let's go do that now. Since we were starting again, we decided to go about it in a new way. We decided it'd be a ton of help if the ground was a lot more flat, so we got out this tool called the rotary hoe, or as I like to call it, the spinning machine of death. This machine has three rotating blades on each side that will pretty much munch anything that gets along its way. Oh, well, almost anything. Not bad, stop. Stop. Big concrete block under the plate there! What? Big concrete block! Oh, oh. So we went around a few times and made this ground a lot softer, which was great for when we had to level out the posts. I forgot to say earlier that we're putting down sleepers on the ground before the pallets. So we bought in a few of these. Measured it out for square. Leveled each post. And then added some pallets on the top. Now some of these pallets stuck out a bit, so we just chopped them down to tab with the reciprocating saw. Now you may notice there's an often great gap in the middle, and that's the size of half a pallet, and we went about this in the worst way possible by chopping it all down the middle with a handsaw. And it was exhausting. Our next step in this project was to attach the pallets to the sleepers, and we pre-drilled, then screwed them in at an angle. Now it's just time for the chipboard and we bought a sheet over, lined it up on the edge, screwed it down to the pallets, then brought over another sheet and connected it with the groove, then just keep repeating until we're all at the end. With the last sheet on, it was time for a bit of a joke. Did you hear I made a, um, a car out of wood? No. Yeah, wooden, wooden frame, wooden wheels, wooden engine, wooden body, wooden seats. You know what happened? No. Wooden start. Oh, very fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, 
right, that was the last screw going into this chipboard, which means the base is now done. What we've done off camera is we've also added some boards along here to help with structural. But what I think we might do is we might get a long bit of wood and put it along the front there just for decoration. Now, although this does make a very good dance floor, it would also make a very good base for the shed. Which leads us on to our next step, which is actually building the tin shed, which is stored in a couple boxes just over there. Now, my next day off from work is six days away. So we're going to cover all this up and hope those rain clouds don't get it before we can go build the part for the shed. Which will be six days for me, but just a flash for you. Okay, so here's the go-kart shed all completed, and if you want my honest advice, if you do need a shed like this one, don't buy one of these, just go build a new one. This thing was a pain in the ass to assemble, I tell you what, none of the holes lined up. You pretty much have to drill your own holes for almost every single one. Um, yeah, there was, a, there was a lot of messing about with this, but it's up. It's a tin shed, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty solid, so that's alright. Um, but yeah, no, if I was going to redo this, I would build a new one from scratch. So even though this thing was a complete pain in the ass to assemble, it's up now and it provides good shelter enough for the go-karts. And it also leaves a little bit of extra room for another go-kart, which I think is what we're going to be starting to build here soon. So subscribe to stay up to date for that one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in another video. Bye for now.